Hey everyone, welcome to Tea Time with Bev. Alright, so as I said in my previous video, I was going to do a video just go over, going over how to apply for the Korean government scholarship. Um, as I mentioned earlier that I did apply, but I did not get the scholarship. However, I want to share the information with all my viewers so that if you are interested, and you know, um, going over to South Korea to learn more about their culture and also to further education there, then this video is for you. So now, stay tuned. I'm gonna go over um, the types of way to apply and the application process also and just give you any information. I will also make sure to put all the links to the websites where you can get more information in case I forget to uh, mention something in the video. You can go to the website and you know have access to all the information. I'm just giving you the basics that way you know you know where to go to for information. All right. So like I said, um, when I was applying, the process is actually simple, but getting the information was hard. So these are the type of ways to apply for this program. There are two ways, the university track and the embassy track. For the university track, you can only apply to one university. One university, you'll go to the website, apply, send your information, and that's it. However, for the embassy, you are allowed to apply to three universities. So I will always recommend the embassy track just because you have more option because in that situation with the university if the school doesn't pick you that's it you know learn from me and go with the embassy track that we have more options okay so um that's the types of way to apply now i'm going to go ahead and provide you more information as in who qualifies and what the scholarship offers. Now, uh, for those who are going for their bachelor's, master's, and doctorate um, degrees qualify for this scholarship. The only thing is you have to be less than 40 years old. You can't be more than 40 years old or else you're not gonna get it. Another thing too is that you have to be a foreigner. And what I mean by that is that you cannot be a Korean citizen as in someone born in Korea. You can't, you have to be a foreigner. Um, and your parents also have to be foreigners as well. They can't be Korean citizens because they will uh, request all those information as in your passport or your birth certificate and your parents' information as well. So keep that in mind. Another thing too is that they do a medical examination. You're gonna have to do a medical examination here or wherever you are. Um, and then when you go to South Korea, you're going to also do a medical examination as well as in you have to be healthy, you know, um, healthy enough to be able to attend school without any issues or without your health, um, you know, concerns getting in the way. So that is what is needed. And another thing too that is required is that um, here in the States, uh, the GPA scale is a, like on a 4.0, so I'm just going to base this on a 4.0 scale, which for here, you need a 2.64 GPA to qualify for this scholarship. If you have less than 2.64, you are disqualified and you not pick you. All right, so another thing to go over is that um, for the bachelors, is five years for the bachelors. Um, four years for the course degrees, right, for the, your program, and then one year to learn the language, okay? Um, same thing goes for the master's and the doctorate program. Um, for the master's, it's three years, two years for, you know, your courses, to, you know, for your actual program that you are uh, taking, and then uh, one year for the language. For the doctorate program is four years, three years for the degree courses and one year for um, the So you have to, to make language. sure that you are applying to the universities that have the scholarship program. Don't just go look up some random university to apply to. You have to make sure that the university that you're applying to is listed, okay? That they actually give out the KGSP 
um, scholarship. If not, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, make sure that your university is on the list. And they have a variety of universities, um, a variety. So if you're a person who's going to apply to the embassy, make sure that you do research. You know, go to the website, look up the university, the type of programs that they have, and try to apply, you know, based on your major. For example, I applied um, for public health. So um, that was the, uh, I try to find schools that had public health, okay? Um, make sure that whatever it is that you want to do, the school offers it, okay? Don't just, because I know there's some people who would just, um, because they just won the scholarship, they'll just pick any major and then just apply to any school or just to get to the top school like Seoul National University. It, they might not have their major, but they'll just go with some random major and just to get the scholarship. I would advise against that because, you know, you also want to make sure that you're doing what you love. Um, you're doing something that you can actually use to work with in the future. Don't just waste your time, you know, just doing um, some major that has no interest. So, for example, um, you want to do public health. But because the school you're applying to doesn't have public health, so you're like, you know what? I'm just gonna do a film major, you know, because that's what that school have. What are you gonna do with the film major later on? If that's if filming is not in your best, you know, not in your interest. So I'll be very careful with you know. Another that thing selection. too that they provide is that um, a round trip. So they will pay or cover your plane ticket, which is very nice because they're quite expensive. Um, another thing too is that you get a monthly allowance and this is for the graduate program so with a master's or with a doctorate you get 900,000 won which um, when it's um, converted to US dollars is $900 I believe give and take $900. Um, if you are doing research in your doctorate program for that you get 210,000 um, won uh, depending on what field you're in, some you get more, some you get less. And then you also get a settlement allowance when you arrive of 200,000 won. Um, your language training fee, mind you, you're going to be taking a language course for one year. That is covered. Um, your tuition is also covered. Um, basic stuff like um, printing and all this stuff is covered. Your medical insurance is also covered. Um, depending on what major you you are applying to, you may qualify for a grant. So that will also be covered. I believe for grants, they give you about 100,000 won. And then this is for the undergraduate. Similar, except that instead of um, 900,000 won, you only get 800,000 won. But everything else is pretty so much now, the same. Here's the tricky part. Korea, I believe, let me think, what was the number for this year? I believe they selected 670 people from all over the world. I mean, across Africa, across Asian countries, across Europe, across, you know, um, the U.S. So, it's, it's very competitive, okay? So, for example, Ghana. For Ghana, the quota was four people. They were selected just four people out of all the applicants. So it's very competitive. Um, so you have to, it's, I'll say it's also kind of like luck. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's also with luck. So if you have good luck and it's, you know, um, it's in God's will for you to get this scholarship, then yeah, but the quota is quite low for certain countries. They pick more applicants from um, other countries than, you know, I'm not going to go over the countries that they um, select applicants from. You can go to the website to go over that and, it, you know, give you all the lists. So if your country is in one of the, the list, then you qualify to apply for this. Um, there are three okay. um, selection procedures where the first round will be when um, the uh, they will be accepting applications. Now... 
I applied as a graduate. So I'm not sure whether it's different from undergraduate. That is something that you're going to have to, um, you know, find out from the website uh, because I don't want to give you the wrong date. But I know for certain that for graduates, um, the applications uh, were forwarded to NIIED, which stands for the National Institute of International Education Department, I think. And um, they were forwarded with, you know, with all, the, all the applications were forwarded to them by April 7th. Um, so that is the deadline, I think. But like I said, I don't know whether they change the dates. You have to check to make sure that, you know, you're submitting your application before the deadline or else you'll be um, automatically disqualified. Uh, because I um, had applied through the embassy, I was communicating regularly. Like I was calling them to make sure I had everything, to make sure that I was on the right track. So just contact the embassy and I will provide the embassy information. But if you're not in my area, you're going to have to look up the Korean embassy for where you're at. Okay. Now, the second selection is when the NIIED will select the successful candidates from among those who pass the first round, but then the university has to pick. So, after you go to the second round, it's not guaranteed that you're still going to get the scholarship, I learned. Um, after the second round, when you pass the second round, then the university also has to pick you. So... Yeah, it's like three different rounds. So you pass the first one, you have to pass the second one and the third one. And then um, I did not make it to the third one because the third one is when the university will call you um, to do a phone interview and just ask you some questions and stuff. I did not get to that round. So I can't really give you much information on how that works. However, there is a lady on YouTube who makes videos and her name is Lola. And um, she actually got this scholarship. Um, so I'm going to put a link to her videos. But she has like videos on the application process, the selection process. And then when she went to Korea, how things were over there. So that, you know, if you want to know more details about that scholarship and like, you know, the procedure, you can just check out her video if you want more information. Um, so I'll put the link to her videos in the description. So I'm not quite video. sure when they're gonna be open for next year. For 2017, they are no longer accepting applications, okay? So if you're looking to apply, you're gonna have to apply for 2018, okay? So I believe undergraduates have to apply later on in the fall. Don't take my word for this you know, follow through on their website and then graduates apply for this, I know, in February. That's when they open, they're open to receiving applications in February. And I think the deadline is April. So go to the website, like I said, make sure you get in all if your you information. Have any questions at all, don't <laughs> hesitate to, um, you know, ask me. Like I said, I didn't get this scholarship, but whatever information I can help you with, I'll love to. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you find it helpful. Um, if I miss anything, don't hesitate to go to the website to get more information. Um, if you have any questions, do ask me. And if I don't know it, I will refer you to where you can get, you know, an answer. Um, like I said, it's a great opportunity for you to travel. And don't just, you know, look at South Korea, but Europe, you know, across other Asian countries, across Africa. There's a lot of schools, a lot of programs that offer scholarships to foreigners. So take advantage of it if you're adventurous like I am. So thanks for watching and have a great day.